Hello everyone, Sabbath blessings and Sabbath evening. As you know, it's still daytime here because we're in a different time zone. So today we're going to continue the part two of the study that um, uh, Sister Maui started uh, last Sabbath evening. So this is pertaining to the positive traits of children. As we know that in Matthew 18 verse 3, uh, Jesus said that unless we become little children, we shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. There is a very deep reason why unless we become as little children and be converted like them, we shall have no, no part into the kingdom. Why do you think? Because the children has positive traits that are essential for uh, anyone who wanted to be there in that kingdom. So that's why we studied, we started the study in providing Bible verses on why uh, we need to be converted and become as little children, meaning copying their positive traits. Of course, we know that be because of sin, there are negative traits of children, but we will not talk about that. We, will, we are going to talk about the positive traits that God wants us to emulate or copy or, or to put into practice. So last time, Sister Maui shared some verses like children don't hold grudges, which is true. They just get mad for a little bit, then later on they'll be fine. So we as adults, we have to learn that as well. So we cannot just, like, you get mad and then you're just mad all day and the next day you're still mad and you can't get over the fact that you can talk about it and settle and, and move on and stop being mad. Or their happiness are found in the, their happiness is found in simple things. They're very quick to praise you for doing even the littlest thing in the world. They are very quick to appreciate, easy to appreciate. So that is one thing that we have to learn because in this world, sometimes we have uh, good, good times, we have bad times. And it's like we're only appreciating the big good times and we cannot um, appreciate the, the the little butterflies or the little bumblebee that that lands decides to land on the flower. Like everything has to be the great things. You you appreciate the great things without um, really thinking that the great things won't be there without the little things. And also we have to understand that kids are very easy to please. Yes, it's, they're very easy to please. They can be happy with the littlest thing, with the simplest thing in the world. And of course, if they're trained to be like that, because we know that also Satan has invented ways to corrupt the minds of the children to where they cannot be content with the little things. But we're talking about the positive traits. They are naturally contented and very easy to please. But when they start started start to grow and um, learn many things not just inside a family but away from the family if it's a christian family then to the friends down the street or they go to school at a young age they're going to learn many things there that will change their natural um natural mental powers and certain things that they think this and that but then it will change too because um, it will also depend on what kind of education they're getting and their minds are very quick to learn. That's one of the most positive, I would say the top, the top five positive traits of children. They're very easy to learn. They're quick to learn. They're easy to train with their food, with their, with their drinks and, and then the way they clothe themselves or habits. They're easy to train. You can, you can train them faster or you can like say their taste buds. You can, um, Educate their taste buds faster than you educate someone who's already been uh, in, in adulthood and, and had been eating certain things. And and so that's why it's good that in the next generation with our little children, it's very easy to, to introduce to them the, the healthier options, the healthier diet, because uh, from birth they had not tasted the stimulants, the strong drinks, this meat and stuff like that. Whereas in, in, in the adulthood years, it's like the taste buds had already formed into something that when you introduce the health message or the healthier options, there'll be more difficulty for them to adapt that kind of diet. So let's go to the second part. That's just a summary. So um, 
children are very easy to discipline compared to adults as it's very easy to train them they are easier to discipline it's easier to discipline them than adults i have two verses here we find we find in job chapter 5 verse 17 behold happy is the man whom god correcteth therefore despise not thou the chastening of the almighty and proverbs 3 verse 11 my son despise not the chastening of the lord neither be wary of his correction so a positive trait of a child of being very easy to discipline is is something that we as adults should um instill in our hearts that if like a child is being corrected they can adjust to it like okay i'm gonna try not to do this and it's it's easy to bend their young minds then when you're in adult years or much more if you're old because like a young branch is easy to bend an old branch will snap or break in half if you force to uh, try to bend it it will snap and just break breaks in half so that's a positive trait of a child that when they are corrected they're easy to uh, accept it they're more willing to accept it and they will hold no grudge on you who, who is trying to correct them like as a parent or as a guardian or an, an older an, an elder in age then being someone in the adulthood that you know you correct them especially the old people it's like you try to correct them they're like what i've been in this earth or in this world longer than you and so why are you correcting me some something like that so it's it's of course it's a, a human nature it's a fallen trait a fallen human nature a trait of a fallen human so god wants us to consider that we have to go and look at this way look at the positive trait of a child when they're corrected they they are more to happy to to accept it then compared to you're not a child so that's one thing we have to consider also in fact um brother paul or is this brother paul who wrote in the book of timothy first timothy chapter 5 verse 1 rebuke not an elder but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren so i looked at the word rebuke it's epic Epipleseo, epipleso, epipleso, or chastise with words, upbraid or scold. You can't scold the old people. Uh, it's a fact. When you scold them, you're asking for trouble. So God is basically uh, reminding us that um, with the old people, we cannot scold them. We can talk to them like a child. Treat them like a child, like you would. Uh, with a child it's like um you have to present your correction in a different manner it's it's like um in a different approach a different way because when you scold them the 100 percent they will get offended of you so we are being reminded that when when you are encountering with a like a confrontation with the old people the way to do that is not by scolding or rebuking there is a specific method on how to approach them because like i said the the old branch will snap and will break in half compared to a child who is likened to a young branch that you can easily bend or shape or form them into something that you want so um in this positive trait let us remember that it's better to be like a child in this particular area when god corrects us let us think like a child let us accept the correction don't be offended and just realize that you're not sinless you're not sinless we are not sinless beings we commit mistakes we commit faults we make faults we fall into sin because of our our lust in of certain things but guess what when the rebuke or the the discipline of the lord comes think like a child be humble like a child accept it and just move on and try harder and harder the next positive trait of a child is since they hold no grudges is because they are easy to forgive and they're easy to move on 
So our verse is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 12 and 15. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But if ye forget, forgive not, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So the positive traits of a child is this, forgiving those who have sinned against us. So like um, the, 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 in the part one, when, when a child has an, an, an disagreement with someone, uh, and then after a while they're playing again, right? So you, you can't really see that with the adults. It's, it's most likely it takes time to heal the, the wounded, you know, wounded feelings and emotions. But with children, they're very quick to catch up. They're very quick to patch up. Uh, they say sorry, they hug, say I love you, that's it. Then they're done. They're back to playing. That's a positive trait that we have to copy. And unless we can copy that, we shall have no part in the kingdom of heaven. Forgiving spirit and moving on, not recalling. You know, um, you've heard of certain people and, and, and maybe you and me or you, you catch yourself like, Someone did something to you in the past that has been settled and forgiven and moved on. Then you keep continuing to talk about it as if it happened yesterday, it happened today. It's, it's a negative trait and that is, shall have no part in the kingdom of heaven. We need to be like a child and stop talking about the past that has already been settled. But of course, um, we are dealing with, um, people not of our faith. And so, like, when you have disagreements with them, um, all we can do is to forgive them, meaning just move on, don't be affected. Even if there's no biblical settlement, because you know why? They don't know the truth. They don't know about Matthew 18. They don't know about talking. They don't know about reasoning to each other. They don't know about approaching the person and talk and settle and, and try to find the solution to the disagreement. It's not the same as... Like those who know the truth, those who know Matthew 18, those who know about confession, those who know about repentance. When you, when you know, when you know what forgiveness is, it starts from confession, confessing your fault. And if you don't confess your fault, there's no repentance. So where's your forgiveness? There's none, right? You just, um, you just avoid the situation. You just don't want to provoke the person. You just stay your distance because they know the truth. They're, they know they're supposed to talk to you. They know they're supposed to reason with you. But since they, they refuse to reason with you because of some other reasons, then just let it be. But with unbelievers who don't know about confession, repentance, forgiveness, you cannot require that from them. You can't expect them to do the first move. You have to be the one to talk to them and try to see if they're willing to reason. They're willing to discuss the matter. If not, then just let it be. Just forgive them. Forgive means, means just let it be. Do not talk about it anymore and keep saying about it. Because, you know, these people will never follow biblical rules. So just let it be. They're unbelievers. They don't know the truth. But if you have an, 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 a disagreement with someone, like in the church, of course, we should be like a child. We have to talk to them and... Move on and forgive, confess, repent. Forgive one another, being kind to one another. So that's the difference between forgiving and moving on with the unbelievers and those who know the truth. Because um, some people would say, why, why can't you just move on and forget? And then the person knows the truth. And how can you do that? You have to follow Bible rules on how to reconcile. But if it's an unbeliever, you cannot enforce that because they are not professed. They don't know that biblical way. They have their own way, which is the world's way. So just let them be and, and find a way not to, to uh, provoke them to be mad or be angry at you. Next um, trait is children are trustful. They are naturally trustful. Let us read from Luke 13, 34. As a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. This is talking about the Israelites, the old Israelites that Jesus said, like he was like the hen who wanted to gather his her chicks. But 
certain people refused or the, the, the nation Israel refused to be gathered under her wings. Because it's like in the book of nature, you see a, a mother hen, she would gather all the chicken or the, no, sorry, the uh, chicks under her wings. And they're very trustful. Once they're under the wings of the, the mother, they're very trustful. They know that they are under the shadow of, uh, like us, we are under the shadow of the Almighty. That's how they feel too. So children are naturally like that. They're very trustful. They, they know that you will protect them. They know that you don't want them to be in trouble. They know that you're doing your best to protect them. Like you give them a house. Okay. You live in a house. They trust that you're going to do that. They're going to be provided. They're very trustful that everything will be provided. Their food. They trust their parents that their parents will provide food for them. It's not the duty of the children, little children to provide food for the parents. The parents will provide food for the children. They work, they do things to earn a living and provide food on the table. It's not the duty of the little children to go and find an employment and get their food and put it in the table. It's reversed. They only do that when they are able to do it on their, in their later years. So children are trustful. They, they, they can submit to your care. Uh, they know that you will clothe them. They know that you'll buy them shoes or slippers. They entrust everything to you. And that is a positive trait as like us being trustful to our Elohim. Psalms 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily shalt be fed. And in verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass just like little children they entrust their future years to their parents they rely everything they they have no burden and that's the next positive trait is they're carefree so i think we will do a part three on this because this is kind of long and let's just make it short to the point and something that you can bear uh, bring home with you and think about the positive traits of children so as a review, we have uh, talked about the children are very easy to discipline. It's very easy to discipline them because their young minds are flexible, not like the adults who are set in their ways. And so we should consider being children, even if we're adults, we should consider being spiritual children, adapting this attitude that we should accept correction and be happy about it. And we should also copy the positive traits of children to be very easy to forgive and very easy to move on. They're very, um, like their, <laughs> their memory on anger is uh, very is short. They have a short memory on the anger part of the brain. And that's what we should possess. Like when you're angry and you should catch it, like, man, why am I angry? I can just do something else to, to, to heal the situation. It's, we always have to remember that, put it in our minds that unless we do that, that's why people get so old and it's just so full of wrinkles because they choose to be bad all the time. They choose to be on the negative side of life, always hating, always being just revengeful or, or just full of the negative energy, the negative energy from these demons that are possessing their minds. And lastly, children are very trustful. They trust you. They, it's like you're riding in an airplane. You trust the pilot, right? You don't want to say, Hey, can I be the pilot? No. Or you're not saying, Oh, I'm so scared if the pilot will make it or if he's going to be able to drive this plane. It goes within any vehicle. You have a jeepney, the buses. You put your, once you enter into the vehicle, you put your life and trust in the driver. Right? Same with Christianity. When you enter into this path, you put your trust and life into the one who is Elohim. 
That's right. It's it's basically like that. Whoever is driving that particular vehicle, literally, it's like your your safety is there. Of course, you pray to God that He will guide because that driver is the one who will determine, you know, how how quick his senses are. That you basically, you uh, your life is like subordinate to what is going to happen with the driver, and that's how children behave and that's how they think they they put their life under the life of their parents or their guardian whoever is taking care of them that they basically just hand everything their security their their um, future to that particular person and that's how we should be towards our elohim in heaven we we basically just have to entrust everything just be trustful now whatever will happen they the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be able to fulfill their purposes in our lives. And so unless we become like this, trustful, very easy to forgive, and very easy and very happy to receive chastisement, there shall be no part for us in the kingdom of heaven. So let the Sabbath evening be a blessed one. May you remember the lessons that we learn here. Now just go home and here, over here, and then pass over here because you're back to the Whatever you're busy in life, let's not do that. Let's cultivate a habit of listening and hearing it and applying it in our lives. With the power of the Holy Spirit, we, we can continue to desire to be like these positive traits of the little children who has, um, or children who are used by God to be an example for us. May God bless you and bye. See you next time.